Welcome on board Panakea, a 150-foot-long Astondoa superyacht. Now, Astondoa are a Spanish shipyard. They've been in business over 100 years. And in that time, they've built over 3,000 yachts, Panakea being the largest of all of them. Now, as we take a look around the interiors of the yacht, it's worth knowing that the designer is Cristiano Gatto. He's a very, very sought after Italian designer of both exteriors and interiors of yachts. And you can really see why he's so popular. Here, with the use of various different sorts of materials from the high gloss macassar, the matte zebra wood, the teak on the outsides, the soft leathers, and the soft furnishings as well. And apart from it being a very rich and sumptuous interior, the layout is particularly interesting too. As you walk in through the main sliding doors, you can see a beautiful bar area, again, using those lovely materials and woods with a glass top, plenty of space inside it for refrigeration and for drinks. Really a lovely way actually to enter the yacht because you come in and immediately one of the crew will be offering you a nice glass of Prosecco from the bar, no doubt. As you walk through, as you can see, there's a seating area on this side. And these two units here are particularly useful. They don't just serve to separate the two areas, but also there's two television sets in there which lift and lower, one facing in one direction and the other facing in the other direction. As we walk through, something I really want to bring to your attention is the wise use of space here. Yacht owners who do watch this channel and those that don't watch the channel are familiar with the problem of a lack of storage space. Even on large yachts, storage space is always at a premium. Those two units that we just looked at, they have drawers in the one side. The other one, as well as holding the television set, of course, also has the air conditioning handler, the air handler for the air conditioning. We had drawers as we walked in. Um, on the starboard side of the saloon. This unit here, as well as being very ornate and very beautiful, offers more storage space. You have more storage space again on the port and the starboard sides of the yacht. It's a really well thought out interior, not just to look nice, not just to look welcoming, but also to offer that practicality of storage space. On the subject of design though, take a look at this, this beautiful curved uh, forward bulkhead here with stainless steel finishing against that Makassar and an automatic door taking us through to the lobby. Again, the lobby area is beautifully ornate, as you can see with that spiral staircase going up and down as well. We'll be taking a look below deck and also on the, on the upper deck in a few moments, but just take a moment to appreciate the design here as well. As we walk on through, over on this side, we have access to the crew quarters, and we'll be looking at that as well a little bit later. But here, we have a beautiful day ahead, and just take a moment, Slava, to take a look at the finishing on this sink. Lovely, robust details there that gives you the feeling of being on a super yacht, not just on a normal yacht. As we walk on through, we come into the owner's area, and he benefits, or she, benefits from a beautiful study here with seating with a desk with more storage space we have drawers here drawers on the other side as well they really have thought this out very very well indeed to offer lots of space for the owner he's able to work from his desk here and have a beautiful view of the sea as well and then of course through here we have the owner's stateroom now, something that I was really impressed as I walked through this yacht was the space of this stateroom. It seems absolutely massive in terms of the width, or in nautical terms, the beam on this side of the yacht. And we'll see a little bit later that they've accomplished that by having side decks that go on the main deck all the way to before the cabin starts, and then they lift up and the side deck continues above here. So effectively, you're able to get all of the beam of the yacht here for the owner to benefit from. And as we look around the yacht, you'll see that becomes a theme, this use of space by playing with the locations of the side decks, how it broadens certain areas and makes other areas a little bit narrower where you do need external side decks. Now, in this stateroom, 
again, we have a, a beautiful leather uh, clad bed. We have these lovely sofas here. Worth noting that just um, behind here is the most enormous walk-in closet that's really ample for, I think, just about any couple who, who own a yacht of this sort of dimension. I don't think anybody would be disappointed with that. Lovely big television screen facing the bed. And then a communicating his and hers head. Just take a look at this. So here we have space for a very large tub, a really good sized shower, his and hers sink units with this lovely stone finishing, drawers underneath, and of course the obligatory toilet and the bidet here as well. Again, lovely design, takes up the full beam of the yacht, and I can hardly think how they could have done this any better. It's not just the owner though that benefits from great accommodation. Let's take a look down at the guests to see the sort of lifestyle that they can enjoy on this yacht. So below deck, we have this nice lobby area. Again, a really good use of space. I can imagine that towels and linen and such like can easily be stored in a big unit like this. It makes it a lot easier for the crew to be able to, um, to manage the, the running of the yacht. We have a nice sized guest stateroom here with a double bed. And once again, they benefit from their own television set and a really beautiful ensuite bathroom. Then on the other side through here, we have a twin. But look at the size of this as a twin. I mean, there's plenty of space. These are good wide beds for, for your guests to be able to sleep in and lovely finishing here. I particularly like this design feature with the different blocks, which are actually, of course, drawers for the chest of drawers at the side of the bed. And as you can see, everybody has their own touchpad, which will operate the air conditioning, the entertainment system. Um, it most likely also operates the curtains, although I haven't verified that, but often they do. Everybody's got plenty of storage space. There's the, uh, the wardrobe here. There's also another wardrobe just behind the door there. And once again, a really beautiful bathroom. Let's take a look at the other cabins though, because there's a surprise around here. This is a five stateroom yacht that can accommodate 10 guests. This is a slightly larger stateroom for your guests. Once again, plenty of storage space here, a nice sized chest of drawers, huge mirror over there for when you're getting changed in the morning and a good sized uh, bathroom with once again, plenty of wardrobe space. And the final cabin is through here. Again, a good sized stateroom for your guests. And again, this lovely feature here with the blocks that build up, just Cristiano Gatto design, absolutely beautiful. This is a nice feature too, these little reading lights here, which are actually bound in hand-stitched leather. All these little details do make a big difference when you're owning a yacht. It just makes you feel good to be on board and it must feel absolutely great to own something like this. Once again, of course, this stateroom has its own ensuite bathroom. But the big surprise is around here. An elevator. This actually takes you all the way to the main deck and then to the upper deck. I'll meet you up there. This elevator takes us right to the Sky Lounge, and this really is such a spectacular area. It's one of the largest Sky Lounges I think I've ever seen on a yacht of this length. And do you remember what I mentioned to you earlier about the side decks and the clever use of the side decks? Well, by running the aft area of the side decks on the main deck level, and then going up to the upper deck level, it's allowed the 
entire beam of the yacht to be used for the Sky Lounger, which is incredibly effective. Again, take a look at the attention to detail in the design here. We have again that lovely high gloss Makassar with the stainless steel features in it, a beautiful marble bar. And by the way, you have wine coolers on either side here. This unit here is entirely for storage. So from the perspective of a stewardess, it's great to be able to just reach back and get the glasses that you need or whatever it is that you need to be using to serve the cocktails. But particularly interesting is this area here of the Sky Lounge, which is the clearly the dining area. But what's particularly interesting is that this glass door here and that one over there completely closes this area so that you're open to the aft deck or you can completely close it so that it becomes a part of the, of the Sky Lounge itself. It's a very clever system. Of course, it can be used the way that it is now where it's half open and half closed, which is probably the way that it will be used most of the time because it allows crew easy access for service to the table and guests easy access to be able to enjoy the deck area. Talking of that, let's take a look at the decks. So the Sky Lounge leads out onto the upper deck aft. And remember, we have no side decks here either. So again, you have the whole beam of the yacht to enjoy. On this particular yacht, the owners opted to have this freestanding furniture. Personally, I like it very much. But of course, if an owner was to buy the yacht and decide to change it, it's the easiest thing in the world to change and to put different models that suit your taste more. Let's take a look, though, at the sun deck, which is really quite impressive. Now, even for a 150 foot yacht, this really is a very large sun deck. Um, as you can see, this entire area is used as a bar. And once again, it's well equipped with refrigeration and ice makers and all the things that you need to be able to enjoy cocktails up here. If you're wondering what this huge expanse is here, this is actually the top of the elevator. Um, so they've used it really as a work surface. I can well imagine this being uh, covered with various aperitivi and little snacks for people to enjoy. And they can take it from here as they walk past and have a snack at a table there, enjoying the lovely view. Here, as I'm sure you've guessed, is the access to and from the crew quarters. So the crew can easily get up here and, and serve their guests in whichever way they need to do that. You have seating areas here to be able to enjoy the sun. And this is really the, um, the largest dining table on the yacht. This can dine 10 people. The one that's in that circular area just below can dine comfortably eight. But this is a five stateroom yacht for 10 guests. So if you do have a full complement of guests on board and everybody wants to eat together, this is where you'd be eating, enjoying the shade of this hard top here as well. Then moving a little bit further aft, you have this absolutely gorgeous tub. I sometimes call them jacuzzi tubs, but uh, it's been pointed out to me that not all of them are actually jacuzzi because jacuzzi, of course, is the make. But this is a really nicely sized uh, tub. As a matter of fact, Panakea has been very successful on the charter market. And for charter guests, usually people do love to have a tub like this because they kind of imagine themselves on their charter with a glass of champagne in the tub while they're waiting for dinner to be served at the table. On a more technical side, something worth mentioning is that to be able to charter, you do have to meet strict commercial requirements because it is in effect a business to have a charter yacht. And so these large life rafts are positioned here because in the highly unlikely event of an emergency, it's important that the life rafts are positioned where they can easily float free rather than being obstructed by anything. So you have to be very careful where these are positioned. And of course, on this yacht, they're positioned in the correct place. Let's take a look at the other decks.
So here we're on the main aft deck. Again, a lovely seating area where people can enjoy a glass of wine and a bit of a chat. This must be a lovely place to sit when the yacht's underway and just be able to watch the wake and enjoy that. Um, but I suspect that a lot of people when the yachts are anchor, as we are now, will spend most of their time down here. Because here we have the, uh, the beach club. Lovely, cozy little area where you're actually right at the same level as, as the ocean itself. And you can really enjoy um, the fact that you're on a yacht. You know, the Italians, not that this is an Italian yacht, but the Italians in marketing often talk about being at one with the ocean, feeling the emotions of the sea and other such marketing hype. But when you're down here in a beach club like this, you do kind of understand what they're talking about because you do feel a very close proximity with the sea. And surely if you're buying a yacht, it's because you enjoy being on the ocean. Here as well, as you can see, you've got storage space for various water toys, but we'll take a look in more detail at the water toy storage now by taking a look at the bow of the yacht. By the way, as we walk up here, you can see various hatches and doors. Most of those are for taking on fresh water. Some of them will be for taking on fuel. Occasionally as well, yachts will have what's called a deck pump out for the black water so that trucks come along to the dock and you can actually pump out the black water tank directly so you don't have to wait until you're out at sea. And here, as you can see, we have these steps coming up to the bow. So we're actually standing directly above the master stateroom now. That is how they managed to get all of that extra space into that stateroom. And here is where most of the storage is located on the yacht. You have a very large personal watercraft on the bow. This is actually for a five meter tender, which is currently in the water, but there's also another tender storage in the side of the yacht um, for another five meter tender. So actually to have five tenders of five meters in length each, that's pretty impressive even for a yacht of this size. But where it really wins out is that all of this structure here lifts up and inside, you have more storage for another personal watercraft and other various toys that you might want to put in there. As we move back, I should point out to you that these railings here, um, again, are really uh, related to the commercial registration of the yacht. This is considered a safety feature, but actually they're easily removable. So if you want to just hang out here without having these in the way, that's an easy fix. And this is probably a good time to take a look at the bridge and start showing you the crew quarters. Well, the bridge, as one would expect, is a very functional area. This is a very popular choice with quite a few yachts to have an elevated seating position so that guests can actually look at their surroundings and see what's happening in the bridge. But of course, it's very useful for the crew as well. But the actual dashboard of the bridge is worthy of giving a little bit of attention because you have all of these various screens here which are interchangeable. Currently, the end screen is being set up for the closed circuit television. And I can see here both the aft of the yacht, I can see the tender bay, the engine room, I can see the side decks. It's a good security feature to have uh, on any yacht. Then we have the radar. The central screen here is a multi-purpose screen showing the wind direction, wind speed, the depth of the water that you're in, and also the compass bearings. Then we have the radar again, and finally the plotter. You can change those around according to your preference, whichever the captain prefers. Of course, we have the throttle controls here, and then we have the track stabilizer control here. Now on this particular yacht, the stabilizers are very big, fins. They're specially designed so that they're aquadynamic through the water so they don't create too much drag. But at the same time, they move 
to be able to give the yacht stability when it's at anchor too, which is such an important feature for many modern yachts. Coming through here, we have the captain's cabin. Now, because on charter, it's very good to have as many crew as you possibly can to be able to offer a good service. So apart from just being for the captain, there's also an extra bunk here in case you do need it. Of course, the captain has his own ensuite bathroom through here. But rather interestingly, they also have direct access to the galley. Now there's different ways for the crew to get to the galley. They can go down the side deck and indirectly to the galley door, um, or they can go through the Sky Lounge if they're serving at the Sky Lounge. But it's good that the captain can go directly there as well. Let's, let's take a look how that works. These are those steps up that I mentioned earlier that take you up to the sun deck. Here you also have the second station for the elevator for the main deck. And here is the galley. Very professional looking, a restaurant galley with all of this stainless steel. Personally, I like stainless steel very much. It's easy to keep clean. It looks rugged, it looks professional. There's a reason that many professional restaurants will have a, a kitchen just like this galley is. And you have everything, loads of storage space. You have a really, big hob there to be able to cook on, a massive oven, everything that you could need to be able to give good service to the guests that are on board. And the service from a potential crew of 10. Let's see how that works. So here you have the crew mess. It's an important area because the crew need a space to be able to relax away from guests every so often. Here they can watch the television, fix themselves a snack, enjoy general companionship and, uh, and a chat with the rest of the crew. Uh, through here, we have the laundry room where there's actually two washers and two dryers, as well as a reasonable space to be able to get your ironing done as well something I seem to be spending too much time doing for myself at the moment. And then the main accommodation for the crew is here. But before we get there, look at the size of this. This is not just a fridge, it's an entire refrigerated room. With a second room here for a freezer that's behind that door. So lots and lots of space for all of your refrigerated foods and drinks that you might have on board. Moving forward, we have three cabins. This one here has two bunks. And needless to say, of course, they have their own bathroom and shower as well. And then we have another two cabins here. This one as well has two bunks and a bathroom. This one though, a little bit bigger with four bunks and a bathroom and a shower. And as you can see, we're getting right up towards the bow of the yacht here. So that's a step up because of course, the, the, the hull is starting to lift up at this point. They've really used every square inch of the yacht in the best way that they possibly can to be able to have a, a decent sized crew, but also lots of space uh, for the guest area too. The final thing that we haven't looked at just yet is the engine room. Now access to the engine room is down those same steps that we took earlier to the beach club. When you get to the bottom of the steps, you just turn left instead of turning right. And that will take you to the engine room. And just look at these. These are 4,000 series MTU engines, considerably bigger in size than the smaller 2000 series that many yachts do have and seriously powerful units. Now Panakea has a 70,000 litre fuel tank. She can cruise at 12 knots, which I'm told is the comfortable cruising speed, and her top speed is 16 knots. As you look around the engine room, just a few things worthy of note are that she has two 
80 kilowatt generators, but she also has a third 40 kilowatt generator. On a yacht, that's often called the night generator, so that it just keeps the noise down at night when everybody's sleeping and less things need to be functioning. So you'll have the air conditioning on, but really not much else. So you have that night generator for that reason. Another thing I want to draw to your attention, which is not unique to this yacht, but is worth knowing about, these huge stainless steel tubes here are actually the exhausts of the engines. And this white piping here is actually taking up the seawater to cool the engine exhausts down, which actually discharge underwater, which is a natural silencer for the exhaust system. It's a very well thought out engine room indeed, as you would imagine for a shipyard that has produced over 3000 yachts. And as you can see, there's also a separate area for the engineer. The engineer has his own control room where he has a good visibility of the engine room and is in pro close proximity so that he can get his hands on things and work during the day. It's not a job for everybody, but people who are into their engineering certainly enjoy this kind of a job and this kind of a setup. Well, panacea, of course, means panacea. I'm sure that you've already figured that out. And it's a great name for the yacht because a panacea, of course, is something that cures all ailments. And this yacht, I'm sure, if you spent two weeks on board, you'd feel pretty good and soon forget about any ailments that you may have. She's now become available for sale, very recently become available for sale. And the broker representing her is a great friend of mine and also a, a great colleague called Richard Higgins. He knows everything you need to know about this yacht in order to make an intelligent decision as to whether you would want to buy her or not. His contact details are on screen now. So if you are a qualified buyer and you want more details, please do get in touch with him.